this is Abby, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I made my DIY rabbit cage. So I decided to convert under my loft bed into a rabbit cage, and although it would have been a lot easier to just bring the condo cage with me from when we moved, I decided it had been a year with that cage, it was time to try something else, so I made this. So the first part I'm going to be talking about is the floor. So I made the floor just how I've made every other floor level and I actually have a separate video on how I made one before so I'll link that down below. And this space was around 75 inches by 40 inches to fit under the bunk bed and I cut out these little corner wedges so then it would fit perfectly around the poles. And yeah, I got the trim, screwed it in and it basically looked like this, nice and clean. The only problem was that I got like an old batch of tiles or something and they weren't sticking that well, which was kind of annoying. But then it was time to place it in so I took out their little cage there and placed it in and then I ended up placing the grids back on top of the base for now and it just kind of looked like this here and I did lose footage somewhere of a lot of this stuff but this is basically what it looked like then I had my dad cut the nicer piece of plywood for the two sides which were about 41 inches by 29 and a half inches and also the wood for the back and I just need to stop here for a second and talk about this for a second I lost footage of me putting in the wood in the back but it was basically this big long piece of the cheaper type of plywood it was cut to size it fit in there really snugly which is how I wanted it to I drilled holes at the top and wrapped zip ties around the beam there and on the bottom I just drilled it into the trim so not too much happened with that but I'm really sorry about footage being lost places. Then it was time to paint the outside of the side pieces and this took quite a while but I just put on some music or video or whatever and just started painting and I ended up having to do like two coats for each piece. Again I did a horrible job filming for some reason but for the sides I basically just placed them in, drilled holes in the wood, then wrapped the zip ties around and basically zip tied it to the frame of the loft and at the bottom I just drilled screws from the inside of the cage into the trim on the outside and I did this to both and it turned out being really really sturdy. And next for the sides was the classic putting grids up and I did six grids on each side and it turned out to be enough. And placing grids does take a long time and a lot of zip ties, but I had just some music playing and just took my time and it was really secure. I was so surprised on how like secure the actual cage ended up being, but just putting the grids on, especially these, the white ones that I have that are super thick, this ended up working really well for the sides. <laughs> top left corner of the top left grid you can see that I actually had to cut the corner to fit where that like bolt thing is and that is a little bit difficult to do I just took like the hacksaw and cut through the metal and I had to do this for um, two grids on each of the sides to make it fit properly And then I started working on the front once both of the sides were done. So here I have the front piece, which is a pretty big size piece of wood. And I just take the drill and I'm just screwing screws into the edge so then it would go into the side piece and also on the bottom so then it would screw into the trim. And then I started putting grids on the front of the cage and I put six on the front here as well. Think back. Think back to your last raid on the Southern Water Tribe. I don't know what you're talking about. Face. I don't know. And it ended up not being sturdy enough just like that so I had to add this board 
and I cut it to size and I put it up and it, I ended up being able to drill the plywood into it and then drill holes in it and attach the grids to it as you can see here with the zip ties and this ended up being just what I needed for the cage to make it nice and sturdy and it ended up working really well. As you can see on the bottom I did have to kind of chisel the trim out so then it would fit perfectly on the floor. And then because I ended up putting these sides on the inside of the trim, I wanted to add more trim to the inside. And classic me got the measurement wrong somehow and it was too short so I had to cut this piece and kind of wham it in there with force so then it would stay in there. So that ended up working fine I guess, but yeah. And then I just took the drill and screwed the screws into it to secure it. And then it was time for the door, and for the door I just decided to do grids for now because it was the easiest and I needed to get this done. So here I am just zip tying some grids together to make them for the doors. <laughs> So after I had the grids ready, I had to drill a ton of holes down the side here where this piece is so then I would have enough holes for all the zip ties and it was quite a lot of drilling and then as you can see here I'm just zip tying around the wood and this ended up working okay, not as well as I wanted it to. Probably in the future I'll come up with some sort of hinge thing and not like zip ties because I'd like it to open like more because it doesn't open all the way. And then I went through and cut all the ends of the zip ties off of the cage. And after that the last thing to do was the little level on the top. So I first started off taking my old level that I had in my old cage and ripping the trim off of it. And then my dad cut the base with the circular saw to fit in the cage. And then I started leveling where I wanted it to go and my dad cut these kind of like rough saw lumber or whatever you call it pieces. Just what we had to use them as like a base to put the base on sort of. So I just leveled it, drew a line, and then drilled that in. I did one from the inside and then I went around and I measured it and then it screwed a couple from the outside as well. And then I did it on the two sides as well, so then it looked like this. And then came the moment of truth, putting in the base and seeing if it fit. And it was actually kind of hard to put it in. It was kind of an awkward angle and I kept hitting zip ties and stuff. But eventually I did get it in and it fit pretty well, so I was very happy about that. And then it was time for the ramp. So the first thing I did was take my old ramp that I already had from my cage before and I measured where I needed to cut it for it to actually fit because it was a bit too long. So I did that and then it looked kind of like this and the hinge was already on it so all I had to do was find some screws and screw the hinge into the top of the level up there. And then I was done with the cage. The end square footage of this cage for the main bottom part is around 22 square feet of floor space. And if you add the level, that's another seven and a half square feet. So if you include the level, it is 29 and a half square feet, which I think that's a pretty good amount for two bunnies that also get a lot of free time in a day as well. But yeah guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me make this cage and hopefully it has inspired you or maybe you come up or maybe you've come up with some ideas or maybe you just enjoyed watching. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye! Bye.